delighted to introduce you to Tara Darabji. She's been active with Tri-Valley Care since becoming the group's outreach director more than a decade ago. She's testified in hearings and other venues locally and has traveled extensively to brief members of Congress and administration officials on nuclear weapons policy, Livermore Lab, nuclear workers made ill on the job exposure, and related topics. She's also a kick-ass mom, <laughs> and she's working with Youth Speaks. And I think it's really important that we recognize the significance of multi-generational participation. And so today, Tara's going to talk with us, and then Eli's going to talk with us. And Cyrus, Kali, and Ixtel are here as his moral support and bodyguards. <laughs> Welcome. Um, first off, I want to thank Reverend Hanaoka for his remarks and acknowledge that so often we ask survivors to remember and bear witness and keep the memory alive of trauma that they've gone through. And I think that as someone who was born in the post-nuclear age, um, Survivors of the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki holds an incredible story and it's a painful story and to live through that is something that no one should ever have to live through and to be asked to retell that story again and again and again and go back into that place of trauma is a tremendous thing to ask of survivors and so I just want to take a moment and acknowledge all those who go back into that place for the rest of us who haven't had to live through that so that we can remember that experience and work together to try not to have it again and just take a moment of silence for all those um, for those in the Marshall Islands for the women who have given birth to babies um, without schools um, for those on Shoshone land who have witnessed um, the testing, and then for those in Livermore. So just a moment of silence for all of those directly affected who continue to tell their stories. Thank you. And you know, today we are gathered. It's the 70th, 71st anniversary of the US bombing of Nagasaki. And we're here not only to remember those who were killed and whose lives and homes and families were destroyed, but to stand in living resistance to the ongoing design and development of nuclear weapons. And we're gathered here in Livermore at this nuclear weapons lab because it's one of the world's primary design centers for nuclear weapons. Behind this fence right now, new nuclear weapons are created and modernized for possible use. Today, nuclear weapons designers right here in Livermore are creating the warhead for a new long-range standoff cruise missile capable of launching a sneak nuclear attack. And on this anniversary of the horrific atomic bombing of Nagasaki by the United States, we are here to demand an end to nuclear weapons. Instead of new warheads, we call for the abolition of nuclear warheads, right? We are also here to hold our government accountable. The U.S. plans to spend $1 trillion over the next 30 years to upgrade every nuclear weapon in the stockpile and to create new bomb plants to manufacture these new nuclear weapons. One trillion dollars. I ask you what you would do with one trillion dollars. What would our world look like if we had one trillion dollars for education, if we had it for health care, if we had it for housing, for mental health services that are tremendously lacking all across our communities? What would you do with with one trillion dollars. The US, in our name, plans to use that to modernize nuclear weapons. One of the programs is, quote, life extension programs. Yes. Yeah. 
We have life extension programs for nuclear warheads, but in the United States, we lack basic access for health care. Let's have universal health care for people, not warheads. Right here, we're looking at one of the premier scientific institutions of our times. We see solar panels, which look kind of nice, but I ask you what's happening underneath. What's buried under the ground? What types of toxic radioactive materials are leaking out? What are we doing in the name of science? When I lived in Livermore, I witnessed a lot of good, smart people working in this institution spending resources and energy in their pursuit of weapons of mass destruction. But when I talked to individual people working at the labs, usually they told me, I conduct theoretical research. Yet 86% of Livermore Labs budget goes directly into nuclear weapons activities. 86% of the budget. There is nothing theoretical about how our tax dollars are spent at Livermore Lab. They pay for the design and development of the next generation of nuclear bombs. And there's another thing that's a casualty of how our taxpayer dollars are spent. That's what happens to the health of people living right here in the community here in Livermore. Over one million curies of airborne radiation has leaked out of this facility. This is roughly equivalent to the amount of radiation deposited on the people of Hiroshima by the US bombing. According to the National Academy of Science report on ionizing radiation, there is no safe level of exposure. It's not a linear dose. Any amount, even small amounts, can cause damage. And what's really appalling to me that the National Academy of Science has also found is it's that our infants are the most vulnerable. And actually our female infants are the most vulnerable population far more than adult males, which our safety standards are based on. Few studies have been done here in Livermore on the real health and environmental impacts of having nuclear weapons development in the community. But one California State Department, Health State Department study found that children born in Livermore are six times more likely to develop malignant melanoma than other children living in Alameda County. Yet Alameda County, the entire county, is within the circumference that environmental reports say are routinely affected by laboratory activities. They say it's the 50 mile radius. Raise your hand if you're from San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, Berkeley, Concord, Stockton. More than 7 million people live in the radius, so the 50 mile radius surrounding this facility. Groundwater is contaminated here. And also in the high explosive testing facility in nearby Tracy, which is also run and operated by the lab. Thousands of workers at Livermore Lab have been made ill. Many have died from their exposure. One of the elements that the lab experiments with is radioactive hydrogen. It's also called tritium. Tritium has contaminated the air, water, and soil. Elevated levels have been found in wine that grows in Livermore. And the late Marion Folk, who was an advisor to Tri-Valley Cares and a weaponeer who worked at the Manhattan Project, explained in an interview prior to his passing. He said, quote, a lot of the poor bastards out there had and still have no idea what the dangers of tritium exposures are or consequences of those exposures. And now years later, they are all sick. We are here today for the workers inside the facility, the residents around, and for our community. We are living in dark times. And I ask you, what kind of light do we want to be? 
Do we want to be the type of the atomic bomb that kills and destroys and controls? Or do we want to follow the lights in our hearts and find a new way of being together? Sometimes we must enter darkness to find the light. And sometimes we must be humble and look towards future generations and hope that their wisdom and their knowledge will lead us. And I want to invite up to the mic right now, Eli. <laughs> Try this one. Is that one on? Okay, right up. We are gathered here today to remember when the monster hit our earth. This monster hit a place called Japan. We are not here to celebrate the monster, but to honor the people who are hurt and killed by this monster. Today, we call this monster a bomb. A nuclear bomb. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. Thank you.